Howdy, Beefalo Bart here, and welcome. Damn, can you take 30 seconds to start the freaking stream? Anywho, want to talk a little bit about level streaming. Why? I don't know. Um, I was working on trying to resolve <laughs> a, an issue with this freaking editor that's bugged me for going on about a year now, or more. Still haven't resolved it, by the way. I've come close, but still no cigar. So, got a little demonstration map here. Okay, that's weird. Some of the, the pitfalls of level streaming, as you can see, there is an object that's going to be right there. However, it's showing the shadow for it, <laughs> even though it doesn't exist. It's not visible in the world, but it's still casting a shadow. All right, so I've got a couple different methods here. Um, this one is just a toggle. This one is turn it on. That one turns it off, and that just turns on another layer. Okay, so level streaming. What is level streaming? Well, in a nutshell, you can use it to, and, and this kind of gets confused with. Um, uh, level streaming versus uh, world composition and there are some good uses for this and okay why would you want to show stuff and then hide stuff well just say that you're you've got a lot of heavy intensive models you know this is a very small example I mean we're talking about if you you've got a, a really big city and you've got a lot of stuff drawn in there if the player can't physically see it from where they're standing, they don't really need to have it drawn and taxing their system. They might be playing on a potato, and they don't need to see it. And it's there, but it's not being drawn, so it won't show up until you actually need it to show up. Now, I can actually turn it on and leave it on and actually go over here and walk around with it. Um, so, you know, you can trigger as you walk from... As an example, you've got a door here. As soon as you open up the door, it actually will then draw all this stuff right here. But then you go back into this building again, and you no longer need to see it, so it's gone. You know, you could use it for one item, a thousand items. If, but, like I say, if you've got a really large amount of stuff that you really don't need the player to have drawn in and loaded in, there's no need for it to be there until it needs to be there. So as you walk over, open up the door, hey, look, whole new world. And then you go back into another building, and you don't need to see that stuff anymore. So it can be beneficial for that. I'm um, trying to come up with some other off-the-wall uses for it. Because just using cookie-cutter methods for actually, this is what it's for. This is how you're supposed to use it. Hell, it you, you can't be creative if you're you're not actually doing it and I'll show what it is and if you guys like I will actually create a whole new setup um, this was just a quick slap together but essentially you get your main map and let's hide everything here my main map exists of nothing but this it's just this little platform my player start and the triggers Stream 2, well, just has that in there. I had other stuff in there, but I took it back out. And then Stream 1, I mean, you can call these whatever you want, but that's what I chose to call them, just to kind of keep them, you know, 1 and 2. And I can draw everything here. And everything will show up in your world outliner, no matter which one it's on. But if you want to edit on just this, you, you select it here. Now, if you don't have the levels thing here, go to Window and check that and it'll actually show I've had it docked here before that's why it's here but all you have to do is just drag the window down and it'll auto dock so by hitting enter on the level you want to work with click on that and now I'm working on this since this is definitely in another world um, stream one I believe if I try to place an item over here that's meant to be in here, it's it's going to give me an error message saying that, uh, hey, you're stupid. 
but not always. So, <laughs> if I had the other two streams, now this is just floating in the air. Because I'm actually working on this section here. Now, if I want to work on stream one, let's make it visible, and then I'm going to hit enter. And now, if you look at it, it turns blue. So that's what, how you know that you're actually working on this right here. So I drag this over here now. And this is actually going to be in the air still because I initially placed it in that world. So if I grab another cube and drag it in here, it's actually going to be part of that. So we won't see that cube because I'm working in this one. And then come over here. Let's turn this one back on. And I'm going to hit enter. Now I'm editing on this one. So let's just four giggles, throw in another. Oh no, it's outside the bounds. So I've noticed that uh, sometimes it doesn't want to cooperate that way. But if I drag it over here, now I can actually take this right here and. Mm, thanks for the sub. Control C, Control V, and grab another floor section. And now, if I go back over to my persistent level, if I hide that, that's going to be part of it. So when I hit play, come over here, and, oh, and it goes away. So, how do you call these events? Uh, there's a couple different ways you can actually do it. You can create a trigger inside the map or you can actually go ahead and do like I did and made separate blueprints. So my assets folder, gadgets, got all these different triggers here and that we're not worried about because that are broke. All right, so if I wanted to create this from scratch, let's, let's take a look at the trigger. Um, this one is just a, just turn it on. Um, it loads it in. So basically what you're doing is on component begin overlap with a box collision or however you want to trigger it then you want to make sure that it's a, a character, a player character or you can actually drag off from other actor and select player um, like third person um, blueprint or I use player underscore base for my player character most of the time. I created a variable for this because um, I'll show you in another blueprint, but essentially all I'm doing is load l stream level and if you put that in there and just type in load and then hit enter you got load stream level you got your level name and then make visible after load so that's the only three things you really need to uh, to work with not don't a need for that should block on load I, I don't know why you'd want to or, or what exactly that does I just haven't had a need for it that's why I haven't messed with it so you've got load and if you type in stream game enable live streaming um, I'm gonna be looking at that later but uh, we're looking for a level streaming load level instance but load stream level and unload. You can actually get streaming level, but I find it just easier to go ahead and, and name them something as simple to remember. In this case, we're working with stream one. If you want it to toggle, um, sure, two, yeah. So whenever you overlap onto it, uh, on component begin overlap, it's going to load it in and when you end overlap it's going to unload very simple very neat very clean so let's actually go in here and I'll create a whole new map and even though there's nothing really changed it wants me to save all oh well yeah I put those little blocks in I'm gonna go ahead and make a new folder we're going to call this map underscore two. You don't have to. It's just one of the things that I do is just try to keep things neat and organized. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new level. 
Now, when creating these for streaming, well, I'm just going to clean up. So I'm just going to grab a couple things here and just move them underground so it's not going to be in my way. And I'm just going to go ahead and grab cube material. Shit, don't need you. Go to geometry, box collision, zero it out. Zero, zero, and negative five. We're going to go with So we actually have a, a floor to stand on. Do need to set our game mode. Third person, so now we can actually walk around. So with that, let's go ahead and save this level. And just save the first time, you can just hit save all. And we're gonna go over to map two. And I'm gonna call this map two. All right, for level streaming, you can see I've got my levels here. So what I want to do is I'm going to just have that folder open, save all one more time, so it's it's good to go and it's happy. I'm going to create by doing this, clicking here, and add existing or create new. I'm just going to go ahead and create new. You also have a default streaming method. You can have it always loaded or set to trigger by blueprint. We're going to leave it on blueprint and we're going to create new. Now, what I found that if you try doing either of these two, and this is in 423, there's a fourth type in 424. Um, they're going to try to give you the same light source and all that stuff all over again. So I just selected empty level and let's go ahead and call this layer one. So now I actually have my main map, which is my persistent level, and then I have layer one. Again, call them whatever you want. So let's grab our floor section here and control C and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm in layer one. You can see it's it's blue. So when I control V and add it in. If I hide layer one, it's going to hide that. And if I hit play, it's not there. In fact, if you try to walk on it, it is totally not there. No collisions, not a thing. So, how are we going to get that new floor section to come up? We want to load in this, this next level. So, save everything. You are the master of your own saves. Just to make it visible, what I'm going to do is go into my gadget folder. I'm going to create a new blueprint actor and I'm going to call this new trigger. Alright, so it's visible. I just throw on a cube and I'm going to change the dimensions to 2 by 2 by 0 0.1 and then just going to add a box collision and scale that at three by three by one is fine. So we have a, um, a trigger that we can use. Don't need anything fancy. So I think what I'll do here is eh, basic shape material, ramp material. Give us yeah. World grid. Yeah, we'll just leave it at that. Um, all right, so we know that this is called layer underscore one. So we need to remember that name. And in our, in our trigger, we can get rid of all these guys. Right click on component, begin overlap. And from here, um, I generally just drag off from other actor and cast to third person character or whatever your player character is. Um, this is just the method that I have always used. And then from here, we don't need anything from that. We just want to know that the third person character is who is actually triggering it. So 
I'll post and save one more time. Then I'm just going to drag out of here and load stream level. Now, again, if I'm going to add other stuff in here where I need to call this same name again, I'll actually promote it to a variable. But again, we know it's capital L for layer and underscore one. So click in here and layer underscore one, make visible after load. And I'm going to hide that so I don't see it so I can place my trigger down. So there's our trigger. We step on that. It's actually going to load that in. So we hit play and find where the hell I put the damn thing. Oh, never mind. Because we was stupid. We need to be in our persistent level. Because we put the trigger in that. So we have to be in our persistent level because, yeah, putting this in, in a hidden layer really isn't going to help. All right, so I'll go over here and poof, there it is. Simple as that. You can make as many as you want. Just try to come up with a, new ideas and how to be creative with it. I mean, you can walk back and forth over now that it's already been triggered. Um, I mean, in fact, if you wanted to, you could always consume that. So after you've done that, you can actually destroy the uh, the actual thing here with a story actor. So once you use it, you no longer need it, so go away. Now, you could also use this as a toggle method and go over here and we used it. Now it's gone and we can just run around and do our thing. However, we want to use a toggle method where if we step on this and turn it on and step off of it and turn it back off. Let's go back over here. I don't know why you would, but, you know, just for the sake of it. And again, drag out from other actor, cast to third person character. And I'm going to go ahead and drag out from here and promote to variable. And we're going to call this our level name. That way I could drag it down here. Come from here and unload. And hit enter and you're on the right node for unload stream level. Plug that sucker in there. Compost, save. Now when you walk over here, it'll turn it on. We step off of it, it turns it off. Why you want to do that? I don't know. Um, why I was trying to do this was to create a box collision for a room and scale it up so it fits the actual room. And when you're actually in that room, you're triggering an event that's on, that is going to be hidden inside there. So what I'm going to do here is take these back off. No, we're going to leave that on there. And um, what I'll do here is add an audio file. I'll unhide our layer one. I'm going to select it, hit enter, and I'm going to drag the song in there. We don't hear it because it's not there. But now, I know I didn't put any attenuations or anything else on that. And the reason why is was trying to do the um, the web deal with the YouTube widget. You activate in plugins. Just do a search for web browser right there. Enable it and restart it and come back up and you get a new experimental web browser. Okay, so what I was trying to do with it is I wanted to play a YouTube video in the actual um, thing here 
and yeah it it works but it won't unload and let's just see I got rid of that so um, the point of what I was doing was and we're on this one right here still I'm just gonna do a Uh, cube material doesn't matter because I'm going to overlay it with the, uh, the thing and the box brush go to my details and screw it wrong oh, 20 1920 by 1080 why not We have a big ass viewer screen that is on this other world over here. So it's not there until we walk over here and boom, we load it in. I'm going to go ahead and disable the um, the unload. Well, I don't want to. I, I, uh, it's annoying. This is, this is what really annoyed me, what I was trying to do with the level streaming, because I was grasping at straws trying to figure out how to get this to work. There's no sound attenuation if you do load in a YouTube video. And I'll show how that works here. If you look in the graph, there's nothing. There's not a thing there. And the, in the designer, the only thing that is in here is a web browser and it's anchored to full screen with no margin offsets. And I put in the initial URL here. Now you can actually inject it in there. It doesn't matter how you actually put it in it's going to be there one way or the other so for this case I've got it in my initial URL and if you want to know to how to set up the URL so it works correctly to embed with embedded videos I'll show you once I get this going here so I'm going to create a new gadget which is going to be a blueprint actor video player doesn't matter alright and I'm going to add in a widget. What's that happening, buddy? You can see all of my other things that have been cursing me. This has been cursing me to no end. All right, so that's all I'm doing here is I just added a widget to the blueprint, and I come over here and I'm going to change the draw size to 1920 by 10 oh, 80 you size it right here for your draw size to whatever size your screen is okay and then in your space leave it to world if you change it over to screen you know then it will actually face the player whatever they're walking around you may want it but I don't so we're gonna use my YouTube widget which is just the the web browser only and that's it now if I come in here and drag this blueprint into the map we're still in World One, the the stream. Um, all right, so when you look at it, get close enough, you can see that the, the lettering is backwards. So I have to rotate it. Then I'm just going to place it on the wall. I mean, what you could do also is, which I have done is actually make a video screen that is actually the right size for it and, and everything else. Um, 1920 by 1080, so I wanted it, um, but, well, I definitely need to have it at zero. So yeah, this is what I was trying to do earlier, and it was absolutely just pissing me off. Um, half of 1080 is 560. Is that 540? Math. Mm -hmm. Alright, so when I hit play, nothing's here. Come over here, we're enabling that world. Well, as you can see, but the this is a circle throbber on the screen right now. And since it's streaming in my crappy internet, um, ew. I need to move it just a little bit farther away from the, uh, the wall. Nope, yeah, we want the video player. Alright, 
that should be good enough. So, step on it, and we have an embedded YouTube video in my scene. Yay! There's much rejoicing. And this is what I wanted, was I wanted to be able to, to, to have a YouTube video playing in my map. It's great. But remember, now, if I step off of this um, little pad, it's going to unload that. Yeah, it, it got rid of that entire um, map. It unloaded that level. The music is still freaking playing. It's still playing. And if I step on it again, guess what? It'll load it up again and start playing it again. The bane of my existence. Oh, it's awesome. But there's no way to set the sound attenuation on it. So if I load that into my level, guess what? It's going to be there and everybody 500 miles away on this map is going to hear it just like it's in their ear eardrums. Because there's no sound attenuation that works with a widget blueprint that is playing a YouTube video in the scene. There is no way to add an audio component to it. I have talked with uh, uh, one of the sound engineers from Epic and I have no freaking clue on how to do it. Because it was an experimental plugin. Um, now, I, I've used it for other stuff, like uh, I've just for giggles. On, I made a cell phone that you could actually use inside the game and actually be able to in, use Google. And you can actually type in things into the browser and do a search. You can use full Google inside of your, your game if you wanted to, but um, I know there's a way of getting this to work. And I don't think there's a way to do it in Blueprints. It's going to have to be done in C++. Because the game Tower Unite actually has that feature in it, or did have that at one time, where you get your own apartment and you can go in there and you have you can buy a TV and put the TV up and actually go over to your TV and enter a URL for a video and actually watch a YouTube video in your apartment or in any one of the public televisions or the movie theaters. I wanted that in my game, and it is absolutely no way of doing it in blueprints so that is level streaming in a nutshell and it is cool as hell and to be able to get it to to, to play full screen like that um, I've got uh, some things added to the URL and I'll, I'll show that here in just a second but it just beats me to no end that once you initiate it even if you unload it from the level, it's still going to play the audio until it's done. There's no way to stop it at all. So, quite annoying. Um, let's see here. In the URL for it. Hmm, empty. That's what happens when you um, load the wrong one. Yes, kind of experimenting right here. Um... I'm actually going to go ahead and drag this in here. And I'll load the other one so you can see. I made the fonts larger, not because I'm going old and blind yet, um, but because it's larger and easier to read if you're on a other device besides a, a computer. So you, you run your HTTPS, colon, slash, slash, www. Dot, and then for the YouTube address itself, youtube-nocookie.com so that right there is going to block them from sending cookies which you don't need because you're actually doing this inside of Unreal Engine 4 you're not on a, an actual browser so that blocks their cookies from, from coming down kinda handy um, yeah you can probably use this for a regular as well but embed it's, oh excuse me um the embedded videos, uh, not every YouTube video is able to, to do this. And yeah, I was trying to do the, the Gungam style video and couldn't do it because um, they have got 
embedding disabled on the video and the owner of the video can do that they can set that to be off and because of that you can't get it to go full screen like we've got here in this um, example but being able to load it as an embed here caused it to go full screen without the the top search bar and all the other stuff you just see the video only now as you're looking at uh, a video on YouTube you're gonna have this weird ass number and this is actually the number of the actual video that's the identifier for the video itself so this direct URL will work for everything as long as you put in that weird scrambled up looking gobbledygook of letters and then the question mark I don't know all the the extra codes or whatever but autoplay equals one means it will automatically start playing as soon as it loads it in and then use a colon and encrypted media because some of the YouTube videos did actually need this on the end some don't but I left it in there if it doesn't need it it's not gonna hurt anything so it allowed to play encrypted videos or in, in media in this case so that's how I set up my URLs to actually play with no borders and, and that kind of stuff. So when you're actually in there and you actually have it working, um, you'll notice that the video itself is pretty much like going full screen. You get the little play bottom, uh, play thing on the bottom at first, but that goes away. It's just like you're browsing on, on YouTube itself going full screen. This is Technoax um, royalty free, free music. If you need music for your games, damn sure a uh, good way to do it. Um, hello. But it just pisses me off that I can't unload that widget's audio and get any sound to that. So, if you guys have any other questions about level streaming stuff, um, you know, you can come back to this video or just ask me on Discord. So, while we're on the topic of streaming things, stream party few changes here and there um, still doing some new features and bug squashing along the way um, yeah I'm, I'm playing it in well, I could actually do it go in here and uh, <coughs> play as a standalone game so it, it shows the steam functionality yeah it's still called admin I haven't changed the uh, the, the main title yet because this was an actual project and I started building upon it. So you can see you get Steam functionality. You start off with your white UE4 mannequin. You've got the uh, character editor. I did fix the one bug where if you hit this twice, it would actually just, everything would go away. That was a one minor bug. But when you hit it, you can actually come over here and select your, your player character. It's going to be yellow, pink, Poiple or black kind of hard to see on this screen but we're gonna go with yellow and then hit confirm it actually saves it to the save game and it should be working correctly now um, so now even though this character you see on the screen is actually not your player character this is just a main menu character you're setting his mesh and also committing it to the save game whenever you hit confirm so now it's locked in. So whenever I actually go in here to play, I'm not going to have any problems. So I go to multiplayer, host. I'll add some more functionality in here as well. And whatever for the, uh, the server name, hit make. And poof, we go into the map. So um, there is a gold coin on the center of the floor. It's actually, I've, as you can see here, I've changed from the tab key to the Q key. For the cell phone, and see so you got current. Your current time will show up here, and your current date. So this is actually real time information there. Now these buttons with the X, they don't have any functionality yet. The game button, this will actually be like settings. Right now I'm using it for showing what the key bindings are. Um, you can see I got ten silver and no gold. And go right here, and I'll show this here in just a minute. So the Q key to open and close your phone pick up the gold coin I think I've got it currently set to five yeah so you get five gold coins you've got uh, vendor I'm a vendor press E to uh, press E to close me um, yeah 
I, I got to fix some of the other the text in here. And this is all just for show and tell stuff. This is just building the features before I add the assets in. So our hat vendor, I'm going to go with a brown hat. Got our lovely cowboy hat. We do have four colors to choose from, but you don't have infinite money. Um, see, I'm down to five silver. So if I went in there and tried to buy another hat, then yeah. So we'll check out the uh, the nightclub here in a little bit. And this is kind of a hidden thing there. But if you want to go to this arena, again, I'm going to change the way it all works. And it's still, I got to work on the scoreboard. You go in, you're on the green team, if you use the green spawn. And you go in here, and you run around. Currently the scoreboard, the way I've got it configured, this is for the infection mode, the infected mode. I'm on the green team. If somebody shows up, and I'll actually do a, a dual player here in just a moment. Um, if somebody shows up and they go on the red team, that number will go up. And the whole point of the infection mode is to run around, um, and yeah, I put another scoreboard over there. The scoreboards are independent. I could put 47 of them in here and they all are, all are set up to work correctly. But with an infected mode, uh, for right now, we're assuming that the green guys are infected and the red guys are the healthy ones. So the healthy guys are trying to cure the infected and the infected are trying to, well, infect the cured. And if I cure this guy and basically kill him in other words um, health bar goes down I'll change it over to where if you're on the infected side the color of your health bar turns green so it's your infection level um, but whenever it reaches zero you faint or die and um, you then um, respawn on the other team so you've been cured so you're no longer sick so you don't need to be green again and the red spawn is over there. I made them very obvious right now just for showing features and functions. And it will actually update the, um, well, when I finish fixing it, it'll update the uh, scoreboard to actually show that um, I'm no longer on the green team. So red now has two. So let's walk over here, go to the exit. Now the admin panel, still not done yet. I, I haven't been working on that today. So I can go back over here, go to the red team, and see, I keep my hat. It didn't screw my hat. Now, uh, what I've been working on is also, um, it's kind of hard to see, and they will go through the world. Yeah, I, I had these buildings from the multiplayer shootout, so I figured what the hell, I'll just throw them in here. Um, the darts work. Um, I'm okay with them going through the ground. Uh, because no matter how I do it, every time I try to freaking to, to stop that from happening, you need to make your projectile itself be the root in the, uh, the blueprint. But every time I did that, it turned the son of a bitch around backwards. So your my darts were flying backwards. And they're just placeholder darts to begin with. Um, but still, it kind of pisses me off. Now that I'm out, I can no longer shoot, so there's no point in me being in, in first-person mode. So... It enables your ability to shoot when you go into the arena and disables it when you come back out. So change this from the police station to town hall area. So you actually have the, the, the prison functionality still works with the admin uh, control panel. This guy for right now is your healer and this is a damage pad just to, to knock your health down to 50 to show you that you get close enough and he heals you automatically. Look my little um, hospital sign there. PSP geometries, bro. So yeah, I mean, bare bones functionality with this stuff right here. But the um, the go on duty, still you have to click it twice for some unknown reason. Um, when you go on duty, your character's blue. No problem. I'm going to sneak in here and, and play. You must be off duty to enter. You suck. You must be off duty to enter. So I can't go into the arena because I'm on duty. So I'm going I'm going to have to go back over here and go off duty. I don't know why it does that. I, I haven't been working on that. so. But now I can actually go in here and it works just fine. But you can't go while you're on duty. Uh, I did put that functionality in there to stop you from doing that. 
um, Studio 78, um, little blast from the past on yes and all my cool lights there. Um, while I was stationed in Berlin in the Army, um, one of the clubs that I went to the most was a Studio 78. So to me, a club has to be called Studio 78. It's just a throwback from the past. So we go in here, and I'll change the orientation. So instead of staring at the exit door, when you come in, you'll actually be facing in here. So stick out the post-process volume in here to make it a little bit darker without having to... The building itself is actually a blueprint. That way I can control the lighting with post-process volumes. And the customizable lights, um, the dancers on the, the rotisserie, and the other dancers you've thrown in here. Now this was just a, a temporary building project that I was just kind of screwing with. Um, you see the post-process volume doesn't work back here. You walk out here and you're in the, the post-process volume. You go back here, it's completely off. So that's how bleached out white it was. <laughs> Big difference, huh? A DJ booth. Alright, so um, let's head out of here. So that's that. And then, um, yeah, on the phone, if you just hit the F key, you start doing the, the what I call the stripper dance. <laughs> um, let's actually hit F again to stop dancing. I'll change it to where it actually is a, a montage system later on, and it, it'll go in and out of the um, the animation smoother. Just right now, I just wanted functionality. So you open up my phone, go to the character screen, and setting my default right now, it's that, the sexy dance. But we have turn some butter. Well, I just changed it, so I hit F to stop dancing, and F to start dancing again, and it plays the new animation. Now, every time I hit F, it's going to play that new animation always, and th this is replicated. So, I want to do the Gangnam Style. That stupid video is so addictive to watch. <laughs> uh, we also have the Macarena. We'll come back to the torque. The YMCA dance. And I changed it to Q because hitting tab moves things in the window. So, And you haven't lived till you've seen the UE4 mannequin torque. Sorry. Gotta do it. <laughs> Trying to include goofy shit in here, just so it's it's fun. The animations will continue to loop until you hit F again. Now this, which doesn't have anything in here yet, um, was going to be another themed area. I, I, I want, what kind of theme is this though? It's kind of weird looking wall texture and floor texture. Material is not perfect. Don't get me wrong. I just this was a quick put together. I don't know what this is from, though. This will actually be another type game mode, which will be in here. And no, it's not Minecraft. You're not going to be mining. I just wanted to have a Minecraft theme to it. Um, I might put some some buildings in here and what have you, but I just thought it was kind of a, a different kind of vibe to it. So to get into it, let's go in here. And this will probably be um, a shooting area, you know, shooting at each other and that kind of stuff. In fact, um, no ability to shoot while you're in here. But I thought it was kind of cool to have the, uh, the Minecraft block system in here. These are all um, uh, materials that, that I slapped together from ripouts from Minecraft. What else was I going to show? Um... That's most of the goodies. Um, let's go back to the main menu. Now, when you're in the main menu, and one of the things that I'm going to do, and this is this is going to change a little bit too, but but I may leave the I'm probably going to leave this one in, just clean it up a little bit. But I'm going to be putting Easter eggs throughout the game. 
And if you're not familiar with what an Easter egg is, it's not um, a little dyed egg that you have to go hunt for. You know, but Easter egg is just, you know, for the gaming world, is little things that are thrown into the, the game <coughs> that don't affect the gameplay whatsoever. But they're done when you accidentally find them to give you a little bit of a laugh. I don't know why I did this one. Um, but I did. <laughs> so, you know, some games where you can actually click on the character and spin them around, I might look into doing that later. But what if you touched him in his no-no parts? Worth it, baby. <laughs> Just little dumb shit like that. All it is is a button that is fully transparent. There's no no textures, no nothing on it. And you do it, and you get that stupid little audio sound, and he does the twerk dance. Worth it, baby. Just dumb little Easter eggs to throw in. And this, I encourage everybody, this is something that has been around for a long time in video games. That You know, the gaming industry... People forget to put them in there. And these are important factors of your game. You put the right kind of Easter eggs into your maps, into your menus, things like that. Go to an area that, out of the way that doesn't really do anything in the actual freaking game. And you might find somebody's initials carved on it. Like, um, you know, dumb little thing here. Um, hit exit game. In the save game, <laughs> and I kind of I pointed this out to somebody already, and um, I won't mention any names, Blue. Um, but in the actual game folder, and yes, it's still called admin. I will be changing that. Go in here and go to saved games, and I don't know. You guys probably can't see it, but the saved name is called T R A B dot sav that's your save file t r a b it's bart spelled backwards trab what the hell is a trab it's bart backwards little dumb shit that most people don't notice because if i want to get rid of that save game then it will basically start me back from scratch again so just try to remember when you're building games to do funky shit, you know? I'm going to go in New Pi window. So it, Steam functionality only works in, in the editor when you're actually in standalone game mode. The character editor, um, for right now, I'm keeping all the UE4 mannequin and bare bones, quick slap together shit um, things for just testing functionality. Um, I'm actually going to go back into the map and, and the infection mode and show the progress that I've got on that. But I want to add some more functionality here as well. Let's go into test map and a little two prayers and new pie because everybody likes pie. All right, this is the client. We're going to steal the gold coin and we're going to buy us a hat. We're going to buy a black hat. All right, so you see Clint wearing a hat, perfectly fine. And I'm going to grab the server. See, so everyone can see the hat. So let's buy a hat. Then we're going to buy a brown hat. So that shows up fine. That shows up fine. So this is the client. Client's going to go in here on the green team. And I'm going to head over here by the barrels. barrels and crates. Alright, so now I'm going to go in here on the red team. Again, i got to set the uh, orientation so when you come in, you're not running into the wall. So as you're running around, we, um, position these windows here a little bit better. So having three monitors, I'm usually looking on a different screen. So, I've got a server right here. I'm just going to do this so the server's there. Um, on the client. Switch to first person mode and. Oop. Yeah, see, for some reason, 
you see the health bar on the um, our red guy, which is kind of a good thing, you know, and a bad thing. I'm aiming dead square, but sometimes it shows the darts going over my head and over my shoulder. So watch the health bar. Our our, our dude's gonna get to a certain point, and then he's dead. Now you see. Now I haven't fixed the scoreboard functionality just yet, but I will. But now that I have been killed, or instead of being killed, I have been infected. So now my ass is infected. So what I have to do next is work on a friendly fire system so that you can't do friendly fire. So if I kill him now, we'll see what happens. So I still have a lot of tweaking to get this mode to work correctly. I got a, a delay set for one second, so you can't just sit here and spam the darts. So if I kill him again, he's back on the red team. <laughs> so I have to disable friendly fire and say one and one. And I have to um, fix the replication on a few things here and there. Um, but for some reason, whenever I'm, I'm shooting, I'm on the red team. I don't see the dart flying. You don't see the, on the uh, the client doesn't see them flying through the air, and they should. So I've got to fix that. But the health is definitely going down. And he did. We'll come back. He's at the correct spawn point, but his freaking armor didn't change. So I got a little bit of tweaking to do here and there. Um, right now I'm pretty well doped up on pain meds and and uh, other stuff. Guys, for those of you who have been keeping up with me on Discord, um, yeah, I have a um, bit of a tooth issue. So I have a dentist appointment tomorrow, and they're going to yank that son of a bitch clean out of my head. So yeah, the, um, the infected arena still needs some work. You know, this being the client here, if I hit one, the admin still does not work for the client. But if I hit one here, go on duty. I don't remember if I got everything. I'm going to be rebuilding. Let me see the line trace. So I know that I've tagged them. And warped player has been completely disabled because it, it was buggy. Um, but I'm going to sit in a jail. So, as you can see, client is in jail. Let me out, you son of a bitch. So, we can actually go in here. I'm on duty. I'm going to go to town hall. I'm go check on you. Yeah, you suck. Oh, you want out of jail? Well, goodbye. Uh, I got to fix that sound attenuation on the club. So, I'm going to get an error anyway, but... The hats was working for me all along. It worked in the editor just fine. I don't know why it didn't work for us. Um, we tested it. So let's actually go back here. Let's go off duty. I said I'll fix that at some point because see it fires off another um, line trace. So I, I gotta spend some time on that. But tomorrow I'm going to be at the dentist and so getting a tooth yanked out of my freaking head. But the important shit works. The dancing. Now I found that if you stand on this, it works. But if you start dancing, you just stop turning. But the other thing doesn't. Sometimes it'll actually stop the damn thing too. What do we got? We got the sexy dance. We don't want sexy dance. We want the kingdom style. All right, get out the corner. Like I said, I'll do things like setting the orientation for spawning in. We can see our dude over here doing the gingham style. And I'm still doing sexy dance. I don't want to do sexy dance. We do the Macarena. You don't even have to close the phone. 
and you can use your right mouse button to spin around so you can see your character from different views. And yeah, a lot of good things are working. There's still a lot of little things, but keep in mind, I've got maybe real time about a day and a half more than work on this. You know, I've been zombie mode myself, so see that still gives me an error, and I don't care. It works. It doesn't bother me in the actual play. The go to jail thing, um, it doesn't like this for some reason. I don't know why. Like I said, I just don't care. All this admin functionality um, is going to get rewritten when I get time for it. Um, I'm going to be cleaning it, seriously cleaning up this freaking blueprint because I got shit scattered everywhere. Um, the equip hat. I didn't do anything to this. Um, I mean, it was working just fine for me for equipping the hat and the hat reference from the class reference on Spawn Actor. Um, I did have a remove hat, but not a good one. I, I, I didn't have that finished, so I just removed the remove hat <laughs> functionality. Um, the hat fender should be good. Um, dance stuff fully replicated it's working great um, save game stuff seems to be working pretty flawlessly now um, if y'all need me to I can do another video just on on that on save game so this is the death functionality that I'm working on um, it's still problematic so whenever the the death function is called runs client death so it sets your movement mode to none from your character movement and then your animation you're playing your death animation you know three second pause and then what it does is it gets a reference to the team if you're on team zero that means you you weren't in the arena or not in a team zero is no team so there's no point in doing anything else so if it's zero then Go ahead and set your, your actor location and then set your anim instance class back to the third person animation blueprint. Set movement mode back to walking and then set your health to 100. So you're, you're back to, to good again. But if you're on team one, and this is just it, I've got to go through here and rewrite this so that I can properly replicate this part. I'm going to have to separate this from this. Even though this is replicated, it's not replicating correctly. Like I said, I will have to spend some time and rewrite all of it. But if you're on team one, which is the green team, then it's supposed to set your, yourself to team two. I shouldn't need that at all in here because then I have this custom event, which is replicated to turn you into the red team. So you're going over to the red team. Then it sets your, your actual location to the location of the red team spawn. So if you were infected, you're now no longer infected you're on the healthy team and red team basically is your new color it's supposed to work and I just got to go back and retweak it same thing for one if you were on team two here then you're put on team one you run the the go green team and you set your just relocate you if we look at um, the way these are working here, and these will all work great because when you go into the arena, the colors are working correctly. So you go green team, um, it's multicast reliable, mesh reference, set your skeletal mesh to the green mesh, set your team to one because green team is number one, and I don't need that in there. Set can fire, I just haven't removed it. Um, go, go green team. Um, this is actually run on server reliable so which has authority and client green team this stuff this part works this is all good I was just trying to utilize this instead of rewriting a whole new setup and I just need to write a whole new setup could be lazy so go red team go green team and reset your mesh so if you you change your mesh for some reason and you need to go back to your default mesh the client reset mesh will actually do that for you 
So I can call this anywhere I need it to. And the primary way I have it used is um, for the other arena. When you're on these uh, the red or green team, whenever you use the exit, this blueprint right here, yeah, a lot of spaghetti. Um, cast to the player. Um, you're setting your team to zero. So on here, I'll look at the top here in just a minute and show you the top. But you're setting your team when you, you leave the arena. You're setting your team back to zero, so you're no longer you know, on green or red team. I then call from your player um, character the reset mesh, and that's what it does. It actually resets you back to your default mesh. In my case, I'm the yellow guy. Um, set the actual uh, location, and then set can fire default. So you're no longer able to shoot once you leave the arena. Now with the scoreboard, um, whenever you're leaving the arena, if you're on the red team, you notice that the, the scoreboard, let's actually go back in here. It's like the viewport. If I go into red team, we look at the scoreboard. There's one red team member or one healthy member or whatever here in the, the game. If anybody else joins the red team, that number will go up to two, then three, then four. It'll go up and down incrementally. So um, what I need to do is I get your team, and if it's equal to one, then I have another custom event that I created inside the the actual blueprint for the scoreboard to do a minus one to your score based on your team. I said, trying to go through and tweak everything so that it actually works correctly. And everything that I add in there has to be tweaked and polished and, and reworked and everything else. So the minus one to the green score, you basically, you, your green score, you decrement or you subtract one here. That's a decrement. Um, and you're setting it but you're also checking to make sure this number right here is never goes less than zero. So once it hits zero and tries to go below it, it keeps setting it back to zero. <coughs> so if, yeah, and then it basically just writes it to the scoreboard. So I, I'll go back through and I got to tweak a lot of these little things here. But again, we're talking about a day and a half worth of work. I haven't been able to put a full eight hours work into the project all at one time. So it's two hours here, three hours there, a little bit here and there between toothaches and other problems. So, yeah, scoreboard function. If you want to see how any of this works, just get with me on Discord. I said I'll do a private call and, and um, you know, we just go through and and pick things back and forth. The dart, I keep tweaking the, the power on it a little bit. The only thing that's really in here is it's actually doing damage this way. I'll probably change the damage system over also. Um, but there, it's called the, uh, the death function, which is in the player base. I didn't mean to close the dart. Um, the dart, just a... Uh, goofy little thing. This was uh, two BSB geometries made into a static mesh just so I could have something. Um, I was going to do it as skeletal meshes, but pfft, whatever. Um, I added Rudolph's nose on here. It's just a little sphere collision that I put on the very tip. So what it, it, this is what actually triggers the event because every time I drag this damn static mesh up to make it the default route, it flips for some unknown reason it flips the damn thing to where the projectile movement is making it go backwards. I tried it five different times and I, I finally said to hell with it. Um, if you guys have any ideas or concepts or things or whatever, like the, um, the Minecraft themed room, what kind of combat would you like to see or what kind of game mode would you like to see for the, the Minecraft room? And that's the thing is, even though right now 
all of these rooms are right next to each other. I could make this 50 times bigger and put it way the hell over there and use level streaming so that this doesn't actually get loaded. But for you to go here, you basically you teleport in, you teleport out, just like you're doing now. So, you guys have any ideas of what you might want to see for the Minecraft room? Maybe make a Minecraft sword or a pickaxe or whatever, but or a bow. But I'm thinking just sword combat or you know a shooter, you know whatever. Just you guys, let me know what you think would be uh, good for the Minecraft room. Um, that big ass gray thing there is actually the uh, the club. But things like the club, there's gonna be a lot of features in there. There'll be bartenders, there'll be um, other dancers, bots that are in there dancing, uh, bouncers, security staff, other players. There'll be chairs, lots of chairs. I need to make a chair first. I don't want to load any more assets in. I've <laughs> got to contain myself um, on adding assets in here. These are simple. Um, but that's a lot of friggin' boxes right there, and I don't need that there like that. On the other gadgets, I'll showcase these, and I'm getting ready to get out of here because the uh, pain meds are wearing off. Um, let's actually go to the mesh Minecraft. Yes, I created a TNT block as well. What I'm thinking about doing in the Minecraft mode or in a Minecraft room is having a random spawner for the um, the TNT. So as you're running around doing your thing over here in the Minecraft room, whether it's a shooter or if it's a scavenger hunt room or whatever is going on in this room, then there might be some random TNT that actually spawns in here. Well, I'll build that into the... Um, the actual an actual blueprint because I actually have the sounds to go along with it I also have the creeper sound as well too but um, I extracted a lot of the other files from Minecraft I know I can't physically sell the game with these in it but I can with these textures because I made these textures okay these aren't the actual Minecraft ones because they the Minecraft ones don't have these little border lines and since I'm not using some especially profiled block. These are just freaking BSP geometry cubes that are sized 100 by 100. And yes, it does have the right texture on on the logs. Um, the grass block. Got dirt sides. Dirt bottom. And grass top. They're correct. Materials suck, but they're correct. Um, but I'm just trying to, to come up with concepts and ideas of goofy shit that I can throw into the game to just have fun with. Because why else would you play a game if it's not fun? There's my cowboy hats. You guys want a cowboy hat for your, your project or whatever? Let me know. That's from the... Um, I'll just throw it on Discord. That's actually from the Gunfighter multiplayer Come on. Thank you. Um, the multiplayer gunfighter. You can actually find that in the learning tab. I got a lot of projects. Um, sometime soon I need to go ahead and also um, <sighs> I hate to do it, but um, install Windows 10 on this damn computer. Uh, Chaos Destruction demo looks pretty cool, but um, what I meant to check is see what gun he had, so maybe I could use that pistol for demonstration. The multiplayer shootout. Any of these in here, you see a cloud, means you can actually, there, there's files to, to download, and project files usually. So the multiplayer shootout, it works. Um, not a very good multiplayer system. Oh, that's just not even close to being a nice gun. Yeah, I'm not worried about saving that one. But it is technically multiplayer. Um, but it's just not very good. 
and neither are the controls on this, but yeah, whatever. Um, Marketplace, if you guys haven't checked out the free for the month, go ahead and check them out. Um, if you want me to, to do a video, I will, but I need to stay focused on my project. I was going to release this project um, a year ago, and yeah. By the end of uh, this month, I want to be ready and loading assets, like the Cindy Studios assets. But by the end of March, no later than the end of March, um, yeah, I need to have something on Steam or else I'm just wasting my time. No idea what that is. Um, auto settings, no idea. That one I probably will take a look at just for shits and giggles. Um, a designer for combat units using blueprint scripts to generate more than 200 variants of military vehicles as well as control them. I'm, you know, command and conquer mode right there. So that, that looked promising. Um, first person puzzle template. I'm definitely going to look at that one because I might be able to adapt that into my project. Um, open world AI spawn system. We'll also look into that as well. But these are all free for the month. For sure, I'm going to be looking at this one. And I'm more than likely going to be looking at the open world AI. Um, but they're free for the month. Check them out. I need to avoid them. But I went ahead and added them to my cart. And went through the checkout and everything else on it. So I can get them there and look at it later. Because I know me. I'll be digging my ass through there and having fun with it. And... Not getting any work done. Alright, so what else needs to be updated here? I know that uh, I don't have any assets. I need some more assets. I think... Oh, I'm not paying attention. I know that uh, there was an update for one of these earlier. And I did the update, but I'm still getting a little orange dot. You guys know how much I love notifications. Um, vehicle game that's another good one for um, from Epic you get the project files and everything else 1.7 gigabytes but it's pretty cool um, if you're into the, the car game thing and I was looking at converting over that to use uh, the Cinti Studios cars portals Cinti Studios assets um, uh, Paragon stuff no idea. Alright. Paid meds are wearing off. I'm going to get out of here. But I'm going to be slow on updates. If you guys want me to, to, to package this version, um, I can. And put a link in so it can be played. A few too many bugs for my liking. But I can still package it up, put it on, um, on Discord. Because the... Uh, the infection mode somewhat works. You can get in there and at least shoot at each other and, and have a ball that way. Um, I still got a lot of work to do on the infection mode to get it and the scoreboard in here to work correctly. But let me know what kind of other features we need to work with. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you. Catch me on Discord.